Hello everyone, welcome to my All The Mods 9 Tips and Tricks video. So this will be primarily everything to do with the basics of this pack. So let's hop into it. So first things first, I'm going to go over a couple of things that make your life a little easier when it comes to running the game. So first off, I am using shaders right now. So if uh, I press K, that gets rid of shaders and it looks a lot different out here. Pressing K again puts it back on. Uh, I'm currently using the complementary imagine, no, reimagined. And to get to that, you press the O key and it opens up the shader packs that you can put on uh, or off. If uh, I don't think it's on by default, but if uh, you are struggling, then I do suggest you turn that off. Next up, there is usually in, uh, if you go to the video settings, extras there's usually a thing up in the top right that tells you your fps now if uh, if you're like me and you want to have a clean ui experience and you're also like me and have kind of a bad machine then uh and you get a little depressed looking at those numbers up there if you go to the options video settings extras there's two extras if uh if i go down to this you can see that there's an extra on the end and an extra right there if you go to this extra let me just bump back up because there we go if you go to this extra it's the fourth one down display fps just turn that one off and there you go very nice and clean right now next up whilst we're in the menus uh, if you pop into controls go to keybinds and type in alt -t mine so Alter mine. this is going to be very useful for everybody playing and uh, I'll go over that as my next tip but right now FTB alter mine, uh, you need to set a key for it. I've set mine to the F key and I kind of always set mine to the F key in every pack that has a vein mine because I never use the uh, switch to offhand and F is right next to everything so it's like prime real estate. I don't know why it would be switched to offhand even in vanilla. I don't really get it. Anyway. Um, I've set mine to F, it's usually set to this button and that button is to the left of the one key on your keyboard. Uh, I would suggest rebinding it to something you find more comfortable. So I've set mine to F. It does look like there's conflicts and luckily it does show that this has got a conflict. It's got like the red uh, angle brackets right there. So we could go and change that. I know for a fact that it works even if there is a conflict. So uh, we don't need to worry about that. So alter mine. This is uh, this is probably the first tip that I should be giving you. If uh, you're running around and you're like, okay, I need some more wood, and you, you're there and you're mining the wood for, and it takes forever, you're gonna have to do that for the entire tree. Or if you press the alter mine button, so mine's F. I just chop that entire tree down in one hit. How cool is that? Now that does use some of your hunger. Uh, but you can do it for, oh, this is a good one. Uh, there's no lawnmower in the game, but there is uh, you as a lawnmower. <laughs> so I just did that on all this grass and it gets rid of all of this grass. Look at that. Now, I should definitely mention that there's like uh, other types of vein mines or altar mines that you can do with uh, FTB altar mine. So if you press shift, your altar mine button, as I said, mine is F. Uh, you can then use the scroll wheel and it doesn't scroll your, you know, uh, where all of your stuff is on your bar. It will scroll up in the top left there. So in this case, we're going to go to small tunnel. And if I press alter mine and I punch this right here, it does one block, but in a big tunnel. It does up to 64 blocks. So if there were 64 of this grass, then it would go all the way 64 basically mine it up in this case there was only 21 so it only did 21 um the next one on the list is small square so this one is well you you can guess it's just a, a three by three that could be really useful later on i'm gonna fill this one back in real quick and i'll probably fill this one in as well the next one is uh a large tunnel so that is a combination of the uh, 
three by three and the small tunnel that we just saw there. So I would do it, but I don't want to ruin the terrain right now. Uh, so basically that'll do in a certain, well, okay, let's do it right here. There we go. So it does a three by three and it goes quite far. And yes, I do fill in my, uh, my creeper holes just like that. Anyway, the last one or the last two, I should say that are on the list are the mining tunnel and the escape tunnel. So the mining tunnel is, uh, well, if I mine here, here and here, oh, and here, sorry. Yeah, there we go. So you'll see it's basically like you mine down. So if I do another one right there, there you go, it's mining down. Uh, it's worth mentioning that Ultimine does not like do things that it can't do. So like mining this stone here, if I punch it all the way through, it won't punch through all of the stone that is behind it. And uh, likewise, if I put, you know, a, uh, I don't know, uh, if I put something right here that can be mined and then there's something behind it, it won't just mine the second thing if, if you can't mine it, in other words. Um, and then the last one is escape tunnel, which is literally the opposite of this. So if I dig myself into here, escape tunnel, and it will escape tunnel all the way up. 100% worth mentioning that the uh, level of food that you have, or level of hunger you have, does get affected by using Bane Mine. So use it to your heart's content if you've got like a bunch of food on you. So next up, I'm going to talk about the nature's compass. So if we go nature's compass, this thing right here is the MVP of the entire pack, in my opinion. So what this one does is super easy to make. You uh, get some wood and some saplings and a compass. But what this one does is it allows you to search for a biome and it can take you there. So in our case, we're going to look for a desert. Just a regular desert there we go and it tells us that there's a regular desert uh 1281 blocks away so meters but meters in minecraft is blocks so if we were to run in this direction for 1253 blocks we would hit a desert biome now that becomes really useful when you think about all the modium, vibranium, and unobtainium, which are some of the materials you need to get in this pack. They come from the deep dark, right there, which is 1,623 meters away in uh, that, di wait, yeah, that direction. The crimson or warp forest, warp forest, now this one won't actually do anything because we're not in the nether and this is like a nether specific biome. So it will just say not found. Uh, but if, if we were in the nether, it would find it. And then the last one is end highlands, which again, it won't find it because we're not in the end. But if we were in the end, it would find us an end highlands and we can fly over there. So super, super useful. Next up, we've got the uh, sleeping bag, the hammock and well, just a bed, right? So if it's like raining or, you know, thundering, being annoying basically out there, dropping your frame rate, you know, being super, super annoying like that, you can craft yourself a hammock for the daytime. So if it's daytime and it's not letting you sleep through the night to like end the rain, you can make yourself a hammock and you can sleep through the day instead, which is kind of awesome. So uh, we can't do that right now because... Uh, well, this world has the time stopped. If you're out and about and uh, it's becoming nighttime and you don't want to face any of the creatures, very worth making one of these uh, sleeping bags right here. Super easy to make. It's just made out of these three pieces of wool. And uh, all you do is when it's nighttime, you just right click it on the floor and it acts like a bed. It does not reset your spawn point though. So really useful because that way, if you do accidentally die, you go back to your, your base's bed, if you've got it in your base. This is quite a useful one, in my opinion. Uh, if you uh, don't have the No Mo Wanderers installed, because there's been a bit of an issue with it recently, and it keeps getting added and then removed from the pack because it causes issues, and you are sick and tired of these flipping wandering traders turning up, you can run a command. So if I do slash game rule, 
uh, do wander, oh no, do trader spawning and then false. If you do that, it means that the wandering traders will no longer spawn in your world. Super useful because uh, they are super annoying. This uh, next section I'm going to dedicate to transportation and getting around. So first off, we've got the one that some people might not use because it can be classed as being cheaty. And that is set home. And what that allows us to do is to run off in a certain direction. Type slash home and it will take you back to where you've set as your home. So next up we've got the waystone mod. So I'm going to grab a couple of bits from here that are quite useful. So uh, in fact I need two of these because otherwise they didn't do anything. There we go. So we've got the waystone mod. I'm going to put a waystone here and I'm going to put a waystone there. And what I can do now is from this waystone I can go here and from this waystone I can go there. Beautiful. Uh, imagine if this one is in a village, because these do spawn in villages, by the way. You don't have to craft these, uh, but you can craft them. But imagine this one's in a village that you are planning on moving to. Then you can set another one up in your base, and you can go backwards and forwards from your waystone to the one in the village and set everything up that way. We've also got warp plates. These are actually quite cheap compared to waystones. One ender pearl and one amethyst shard, but uh, it's a lot cheaper than a waystone, which requires four ender pearls and four amethyst shards. So, and it also requires an emerald in the middle. Uh, but yeah, these are super cheap. Put one down there, put one down there. And I can't name these, unfortunately, but if I take that shard out and then I swap it with this shard, so I'm going to take that one out. Put this one in, and then put that one in there. If I stand on this one, I go to the other one. And then if I stand on this one, I go to the other one. Last thing is the warp stone. So you can, if you hold this, I can teleport to there. And there is a little bit of a cooldown on it. There's only a 30 second cooldown, but yeah, there is a cooldown. Next thing is, I'm going to talk about quests real quick. So <laughs> tips and tricks, just like this. So there are a ton of quests. The really, really, really good ones are in Bounty Board. And uh, the main one that I'm going to talk about right now is killing the Warden. If you get a Warden kill, you do get one all the modium. Now you can use this all the modium to get yourself all the modium nuggets. Just like that. There you go. All the modium nuggets. And then you can use that to get yourself a teleport pad to then go into the mining dimension. And there's a lot of all the modium in the mining dimension. So, yeah, that quest right there is really, really good. Um, especially if you're having trouble finding all the modium. If you're playing on a server, this is kind of the only way to get all the modium to begin with, if I'm honest. Uh, unless someone's very kind and leaves the all the modium around, or once they get their first one, they leave the rest of it around. But as you can see, the, the quests are quite extensive in here. There's a, a ton. There's some for Greg Tech as well. There's a few for magic. There's a few for exploration. Uh, we've got tech. We've got resources. We've got storage. Uh, we've got some tools and armor. And then, you know, just a regular getting, getting started. All of those as well. I highly recommend you look through all of the quests. They give you a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of guidance on where to go. So, Speaking of getting around, uh, there is the jetpack. Uh, the only issue I've got, I think, does the jetpack... Oh yeah, it does do damage. Yeah, uh, I'm using the creative one. I just wanted to test it out. But yeah, if you can make yourself a jetpack, that relatively simple to make. You do need quite a bit of iron. I think you need 44 iron. And uh, how many redstone is that? That's like 25 redstone or... You need a bunch of redstone, a bunch of iron, and some leather for this to get your first jetpack. But once you've got your first jetpack, it does allow you to fly around the place. Uh, this obviously is the creative jetpack, which you can make in this pack. Eh. Oh, yeah, it does does damage to you. Yeah, this is how you uh, you make the 
<laughs> the creative jetpack does require a ATM star and some creative essence and creative capacitor, which is a bunch of stuff. Anyway, um, yeah, jetpacks are really good for getting around uh, to begin with. There are a few ways of charging your jetpacks. So if you were using the one from Mechanism, so we could try that one now, actually. It's got a cool sound to it, the Mechanism one. Uh, but it doesn't have as much, like, I don't know, it's harder to control, if you know what I mean. So we can land up here, and there we go. Uh, this one requires hydrogen. Uh, there is a second version, which is the armoured one. I believe it's the same, yeah, it handles the same. But it does let you get around the place. If uh... Oh, and it does do full damage as well. But yeah, uh, there's a few different ways of... Uh charging the jetpacks from iron jetpacks and uh, the, the way that I will explain now is from uh, flux so you might want to go through the entire flux line but the way that I do it is if you get a flux plug you get a flux controller and in this case we're just going to use a creative just like that creative energy cube put that down not there Right there we can set up a new network in this case we're just going to set it up to us so we're going to say private create uh, this one is going to be on there like that and then what we can do is with this thing here the flux controller set us to the same network go to uh, where is it it's network no wireless charging that's the one and you want to turn everything on. You can't turn on your main inventory, but that's actually quite good because you don't you don't want to do that. And make sure you hit apply and don't just hit escape like I just did. So that has now been applied and that has now been applied. There we go. So now if I take these off and I grab myself a uh, jet pack, I'll, I'll take an iron one for now. You can see, oh, I need to turn it on, which is this button. You can see that I can fly around and my uh, my power right there isn't going down. Well, it goes down and then it goes back up as it's getting recharged. So, super, super good way of uh, of getting around the place using, uh, using jetpacks right here. Now, another thing that you can make is called a free runner. Is there a space? Runner. Yeah, there we go. So there's two versions, there's the armoured version and the regular. So we're going to take the regular and I'm going to put those on my feet. And you can see that the power is going up because it's being wirelessly charged. So I'm going to set these to power surge off. There we go. Uh, what these do is uh, they convert your full damage, what you would have taken as full damage. And they subtract the power value from their sword energy. So we can go all the way up like this and we can fall and we don't take any fall damage. So the combination of free runners and a jetpack just means that you can be as clumsy as you want flying about the place and uh, you can fly around without any issues and no worry about dying to fall damage. So next up, I'm going to talk a little bit about brass. <laughs> There's a reason I'm talking about brass, I swear. So if you get some brass and uh, you get a pickaxe mold from uh, Silent Gear, you can actually make yourself a silk touch pickaxe. So if I grab this one right here and we do that, get ourselves a pickaxe head. There we go. I just converted a wooden pickaxe and we can just take that part and chuck it away. We got ourselves a brass pickaxe. Now, if I come over here and I dig there, silk touch. Instant silk touch, really useful. Brass is super easy to get as well. Brass, if we have a look at the dust, it's just copper dust and some zinc dust. If uh, if you're not going the silent gear route, then uh, osmium is the way to go for beginners, right? So you can make yourself a Paxil. It has 2000 durability, which is more than the uh, pickaxe, which is really good. Uh, the armor, so if I take the Helmet, the chest plate, the leggings, and the boots. And I go and get some diamond. Helmet, chest plate, 
leggings and boots. There we go, and we have a look right here. Four armor, three armor toughness, and plus 10% knockback resistance. This has got three armor and two armor toughness. So this has actually got one more armor, one more armor toughness, and it's got plus 10 knockback resistance. And it's the same, almost the same right here. It's just one more armor toughness. Now, obviously, the durability, they're almost the same. So in this case, definitely use um, a osmium gear over diamonds because osmium you can get loads more of. Uh, there is way more common than diamonds are. Um, this is this was actually the same in all the mods eight, which is uh, where I originally got that tip from in all the mods eight. So this is the old way of getting really decent power to begin with, but they've nerfed this so much it's not worth doing in my opinion. Um, so this is the old uh, ethylene gas burning generator trick. So. This this uh, was around since like all the mods seven, and then it was amazing in all the mods eight, and now it seems to have died a death in all the mods nine, unfortunately. Uh, but this one right here is only producing five thousand Fe per tick, and this is quite expensive because each one of these gas burning generators it requires some. Well, we can see it right here: atomic alloys, and atomic alloys. Need some reinforced alloys and some enriched obsidian reinforced alloys require diamonds. And yeah, it's just, yeah, that's super expensive. Now, I don't suggest doing this. I think probably the best power that you can get to begin with is just power as in at power with that. Now, maybe the first power you should go for is an iron furnaces. Iron furnace, just a regular iron furnace generator. So that is, if you get some iron and put it around a furnace, obviously, and then you grab a augment for the generator. So this one is just using some redstone and some stone and stuff. If we were to place that in like that, it does produce power. So this does produce some power if you burn stuff. So you could technically use like the hopper botany pots with loads of trees and stuff. That's what I did in my series to begin with. But I, I did that until I got power. I, I say that until power got added to the pack and then I went for power. So highly recommend power. There's uh, another way of doing wireless charging that isn't using the flux networks. And that is these personal uh, player transmitters. There you go. So if you get one of these and you get a card, so there is a binding dimensional card. These are quite late on, I'd say. Later on, you are gonna need to, yeah, uh, do a bunch of stuff to get to this point. Uh, so how do we make this? There you go, it's just like that. But then this one, you need some nitro stuff. I place that down and I put power into this and then I put this. Oh, I have to, I think it's a right click. There you go. It's bound to me now. If I put that in there, it, this will start charging everything that I have up, including if it's in my inventory. So if I grab, I don't know, like a battery like that, you can see that that is now being charged and that is being charged by this thing right here, not by the flux networks. If I was to move it down here, it would charge even quicker because it's being charged by this and the flux network. So now we're going to move on to mob spawners and things like that. So the uh, roguelike dungeons that you see around the place. Uh, I wonder if I can find one for you. Okay, that took a long time, but we found one of these. They're called dungeon crawl dungeons. And what this dungeon right here does, uh, let me see on off hover. There we go. Is uh, it gives us access to like a ton of spawners. So if we were to go down here, in fact, I've got a little tip for you right here. If you've got flight like me with uh, the jetpack and you've got free runners, if you were to set this to small tunnel like this, and all you do is you dig down like this. And then you go all the way down and you just keep going until, oh, okay. We've got, there you go, right into the middle of this thing. And then you stick that there. 
And then if I were you, I would stick down a waystone so you can come back to this place. So within this place, uh, I'm going to quickly get myself some night vision so I don't have to put down torches. There we go. Got a bit of night vision. What we can do here is if I swap back to shapeless, we can get rid of the iron bars like that. And with the brass pickaxe that I mentioned earlier, if we were to run over, oh, there you go. There's a spawner right there. Oh, we do want to take out the spider, but before we get hit, we can pick the spider spawner up using the brass pickaxe. Now it does use quite a bit of durability right there. Yeah, it did use quite a bit of the uh, brass pickaxe right there, but you can just heal the brass pickaxe easy enough, right? And uh, we got ourselves a spawner. So spawners have been changed slightly recently. So they're, they're a little nerfed again from all the mods 8. But yeah, they're still pretty good. If, uh, if we have a look at this, you can set them up. You can use a conduit on the spawner. And it means that they will just activate all the time. Even if you're not nearby. As long as the chunk is loaded. We've got Ignore's Light. So if... For example, zombies, right? They can only spawn from a spawner if there's like a really low light level. So that's why when you run in with a torch, you can place a torch on there and it will stop them from spawning. Uh, if you use a soul lantern, that doesn't matter. You can put it in a really bright room and the zombies will still spawn. Uh, if we were to place this down, in fact, uh, I am going to place this down. But before we do, I'm going to quickly get the best one, which is the redstone comparator so we get a comparator like this i'm going to place that there and i'm going to slap a comparator on there this now is redstone controlled so if you press the control button you can see it says redstone controlled on there and there's a few things on there so minimum spawn delay means the amount of ticks before like the minimum amount of ticks that has to happen before another spider is spawned or another set of spiders are spawned Maximum spawn delay is the amount of ticks, um, like maximum amount of ticks before another spider is spawned. Um, they've uh, definitely nerfed these recently because it used to be clocks and sugar for minimum and maximum spawn delay. And now it's not that. It is, where is it? All the modium and uh, unobtainium. So yeah, that's that's definitely different from how it originally was. Uh, so these are not quite early game i wouldn't say i think they're just they're good enough especially if you've got a good way of getting conduits in the beginning uh so uh what else have we got here so we've got the maximum entities so that is if we have a look on this yeah no like this there we go maximum entities that this can have around it this spider spawner is six meaning that uh it will spawn four in and then it will spawn another two in and then it just won't spawn any more until those have gone away or they are out of the range of this so that means if you can I, th I think the max is 32 maximum entities and the spawn count as in how many it can spawn in at a certain time is 16 so it goes it basically can spawn twice and then you have to get rid of the ones that are in there before it will spawn again there's also a few really, really good ones on there. So uh, there's silent, which means they're just deadly silent. You can spawn in, I don't know, what's a really annoying... You can spawn in those traders, the wandering traders, if you wanted, using a spawner with the silent on there. And they won't make a noise. It's so good. Golden apple is now what you use for no AI. If you are on a, an older version of All The Mods 9, it will be a chorus fruit. Activation range. You don't really need this unless um, you can't get conduits. So that is Hearts, Hearts of the Sea. Um, highly recommend using the mystical version of this. And I'm not a big mystical fan. So that's how much, <laughs> you know, it, how good it is considering I'm recommending mystical right there. Uh, so that is spawners. Spawners are really useful and uh, you can pick them up with Silk Touch. Worth mentioning that there is a spell from Ars Nouveau which uh, does a Silk Touch. I'm just going to get myself out of here. There we go. That's why I suggest you uh, you go 
yeah, you dig down the middle of this because that, that way you can get yourself out super easy. Uh, but yeah, the R spout with uh, ranged silk touch, super useful, so good. You can actually usually hit the spawner and like retrieve the spawner before it can even spawn anything. So definitely look into Ars Nouveau for the silk touch spell. So back over at uh, base. <laughs> this is kind of base for now. Uh, I am going to show you a really easy way of getting spawn eggs for anything. Almost anything. Some things you can't do this with. But there's this uh, mob swab that you can get from mob grinding utils. So I'm going to do it on this robin right here. And then I'm going to move away because they're loud. But right there it says contains robin DNA. So we can use this uh, with a bucket of experience and a seed so we are going to need to get a bucket of experience so what i'm going to do is i'm going to stand on this xp drain and quickly give myself some experience just like that just enough so i can get a bucket like that so we've got ourselves a fluid xp bucket we've got our mob swab right there we've got some seeds that gets us gm chicken feed now I'm going to quickly get a chicken, there you go, here is a chicken and then what I can do is I can right click on the chicken uh, when I can, uh, there we go. Happy birthday taco! There we go and happy birthday to Darko but there you go, you got yourself a robin spawn egg and now I can place that down and there's a new robin. Amazing. So imagine you've just gone and raided the entire dungeon that we were just in, right? And you've got all of the spawners and you brought them back. And it did not have an Enderman spawner. Well, what you can do is you can swab the Enderman. You can uh, make yourself an Enderman spawn egg, just like this. And you see this, uh, this mob spawner right here? If I right click it with the Enderman spawn egg, it turns it into an Enderman spawner. Which is super great. The... Um, Redstone control is still on there, so it just turns it straight into whatever spawn egg you have. Now, it doesn't work with everything. There is a way to get a wither spawn egg, but um, it doesn't show up in JEI. I just remembered that, but there is a way of getting a wither spawn egg. And uh, it does not work if you try to put it on a spawner anymore. So that's a bit unfortunate. If you did make it before they made the change, if you made the wither with a spawner before they made the change it should still work in fact i've still got one in my all the mods 9 series that i've been playing on a server so yeah it's uh super useful to <laughs> for getting all of those nether stars needed for the atm star so another pickaxe which is super useful is the vengeance pickaxe that we've got right here so you can use this uh, wow, first off you need three diamonds, which sounds expensive, but considering it gives you fortune five, which is a really high fortune level, it's actually really useful. The only problem is it does come with a curse. Now to get rid of curses, you use a purifier, this thing right here, which uh, is from Evilcraft. All of this is from Evilcraft right now. And what you do is you fill this with blood. So I'm going to go get some blood real quick. Oh! Okay, it just um, it pulled all of the, the blood out of the, uh, the dark tank real quick. Um, but that is pulling out of the dark tank into the purifier that we've got right here. And that has purified, if this has got blood in it, that has purified this to make this a fortune 5 pick. Now another thing you can do is stick it in there with a blook. So that is one of these. So if I show you that. Uh, that doesn't take too much to get to. You do need a promise of tenacity. I'm not going to go over all of this because I did this in my ATM9 series, which uh, is linked in the description. But if you uh, if you put a block in there with the Vengeance Pickaxe, and then you pull the Vengeance Pickaxe out, this is now doesn't have anything on there, so we can get rid of it. Look at these ones as well. And then if you pull this one out, there you go. There's a Fortune 5 book. It's a really easy way to get Fortune 5. Next up, we've got the uh, Advanced Magnet. I'm going to go back into normal mode for this. So the Advanced Magnet is a charm. You can put it in your charm slot. So uh, where is your charm slot? 
right there. That's your charm slot. You can shift, right click it to open it up, and you can say if it if you want it to pick up items or not. Uh, you can say pick up experience or not. A bunch of stuff like that. But you can also just right click it to turn it on. Now, if I were to I don't know punch all of that, it gets rid of all of that and it brings it towards me. That, do that everything gets like picked up there's nothing around this area whatsoever really good um but you might think well, there's things in our base that we don't want to pick up so there's this thing called the demagnetizer so there's the demagnetization coil right here and then there's the advanced demagnetization coil right there but the um what these do is well if you hover over it Anything within this radius, so right now it's a 5x5, five five, so it's two out this side, two out this side, and two down and two up. Anything in that radius, if it is dropped, so I'm going to drop this, this light right there, the magnet is not going to be like used on it. If I drop one over there like that, see, the magnet picks it up. So really easy, also super easy to make, because look, you just use an ender pearl and some lapis, iron and redstone for the first one. And then you upgrade it using an ender eye and some gold. So I'm going to start wrapping up soon. Uh, I just wanted to quickly go over a few of the uh, things that I think are really useful. Now, first off is external storages and ME storage buses. So um, I'm going to use refined storage for this example, but it's very similar to how the applied energistics works as well for this, uh, except for an external storage, we use a ME storage bus. So with an external storage, you can actually use an external storage on a storage controller from functional storage. Count how many times I said storage just then, flipping neck, right. So what this does is uh, it allows you to use this as your storage instead of, uh, like some discs. So I could I could literally put this illuminated block in and it will go straight into the drawer right there. If I take that out, there you go, it's gone. Uh, if you've got a drawer full of like all of your cobblestone or something like that, as long as it's linked to your storage controller, in fact, what I'll do is I'll put in uh, several things and you can see it goes over here. I wanted to do this to show off that you don't actually need the storage controller to be touching the uh, the, the drawers anymore because of these two items right here the configuration tool and the linking tool so the linking tool right click in the air swaps the action to remove so we are removing this um, drawer right here now if I put in this cable it won't go into that one because it's not on the network uh, but if you right click it again swap to add so we are adding that and then if you shift right click, it swaps to multiple mode. So again, if we swap to remove, we can remove all of those. And then that is not part of this anymore. So if I try and put in more than like this one won't go in because the only thing that can go in there is the one item because it's going in this drawer. Uh, let's do that again, but uh, with the add like that. There's also this, which is the configuration tool. So you can uh, sneak right click in the air and it swaps it from show hide slash show amounts to hide render upgrades, so like indicator locking. I think it, it starts with locking. So if we were to right click that, it will lock all of these. If we were to right click it again, we can right, right click there and it doesn't show how many of this item you've got. Also, this one is now locked to this item in particular. Now, if we go all the way back around to locking, we can unlock it, get rid of that, and then lock it again. And if we were to click into this, nothing, I'm trying to put this in there, nothing happens because you can't put it in there because that is locked. But uh, let's say this was the illuminated block inverted. We can put that in now because it, it has a space for it. Uh, yeah, that's that's a really useful tip. Uh, that really like cleans up a bunch of like 
in my opinion at least, it cleans up a bunch of storage. Okay, moving on. These are my last tips, I think. Uh, we've got the illuminated block inverted. So this right here, once you've, uh, you've set everything up and you've got your base all nice and tidy and everything, you can use some glowstone, some redstone, and some stone, and you can get these inverted blocks. They look really nice, and they're really good for lighting up your base. There's also these things called the dynamic edge light, which uh, if I show you this recipe right here, is glowstone and some stone. You get six out of it. Place that down. This one is for the top. So this is the top of the block. Looks like that and gives off a decent amount of light. And this one is for the bottom of the block. And you'll notice that this one hugs up against any block that is already there. So if I pick this one up, for example, and I put it down, it doesn't have anything to hug up to. So it just does all of them. And if I were to, I don't know, put it next to this block right here, you'll see that it, it just hugs up against this block. Really, really cool looking blocks in my opinion. And uh, I use these in so many things. Finally, I've got the feral flare lantern. So if I were to just plonk this down right here, this actually places invisible light blocks in a radius. I think it's a 16 by 16 radius. So if you have a massive area that you want to light up, but you don't want to use any of these like inverted light blocks or uh, any torches or anything like that, you can make one of these feral flare lanterns. Actually relatively cheap. There we go. They are gold glowstone, just one glowstone as well, and some glass. These are really handy because uh, they, they just make it so you can easily just light up an entire area. And then last but not least, we've got the mega torch. If you are getting overrun by zombies or, you know, any of the other mobs that uh, Seem to like come and try and attack you during the night time or whenever. If you stick down a mega torch, this stops mobs from spawning in a, I think it's 64 by 64 radius. So that's 64 down, 64 up, 64 left, right, you know, backwards and forwards. Uh, so you can stick one of these in your base and uh, then you just won't have any mobs, any, I say mobs, any bad mobs. I think the word is hostile, hostile mobs. <laughs> yeah, you won't have any of them uh, like walking up on you because they just won't spawn because this prevents the spawning of them. Now, it is just natural spawnings that this pre prevents. Uh, this spawner here from, this is actually from uh, Apotheosis, this mob spawner right here. I know it says Minecraft, but it's Apotheosis that adds all of these things to it. The uh, Mega Torch does not affect the monster spawners right here uh, but it does affect the ender io ones so if you are having trouble then uh, it's probably because you've got a mega torch near your ender io spawner powered spawner anyway i think this is where i'm going to leave it if there's any other tips or tricks that you think are very useful uh, i think i covered most of the ones that i had in my previous tips and tricks video but if there's anything that I've missed out and you think was very, very useful, then uh, please just leave a comment. And uh, yeah, this is all I've got for you. So thank you for watching. Thanks for joining. And I will see you in the next one. Bye.